So this is a 0.2 millimeter sheet of carbon that is designed to replace thermal paste in some applications, can be reused an unlimited amount of times and doesn't degrade over time either. So this is Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut and it's from the same company who brought us Conductonaut, which is a liquid metal thermal compound, which we've used in a few videos previously. Today, we're going to be testing Carbonaut and seeing how good it is against liquid metal, high performance thermal paste and just regular thermal paste. And we're also going to discuss why something like this could be extremely useful. Okay, so before we talk about the thermal results, let's talk about Carbonaut versus thermal paste in general. And the big advantage of Carbonaut is its longevity, as it can be used theoretically an endless amount of times, and thermal performance shouldn't degrade over time. One of the big problems with thermal paste is that it does actually dry out over time. I'm sure many of you have taken the heatsink off of a four or five year old computer, only to see the thermal paste all dried up and gross. So for PC builds out there that you know need to be running, for a very, very long amount of time, five plus years, and they cannot be serviced between that time. For example, school computers, office computers, uh, servers, any you know data critical computers. That's just one example of where Carbonaut could be really useful. For your average gaming PC, thermal paste is absolutely no problem there. Longevity really isn't an issue. Even traditional thermal pastes should be fine for a year, but really for those extensive time periods, we're talking five plus years, that's where Carbonaut could be useful. Before we go any further, let's quickly talk about the specs. So it is 0.2 millimeters thick. It's made of carbon fiber and carbon nanotubes, and it does sit between your CPU heat spreader and your CPU cooler. So basically, instead of applying thermal paste, you would just lie this on top of the CPU and mount your cooler as usual. There are a few different sizes, and the one that I've got here is 32 by 32 millimeters. That fits your typical heat spreader for an Intel CPU, but there are also ones for AMD Ryzen CPUs and Threadripper as well. One really impressive spec about Carbonaut though is the thermal content conductivity and it comes right around in at 63 watts per meter Kelvin and to give you a bit of scale here uh, typical cheap thermal paste will come in at around 5 watts per meter Kelvin decent paste will be around 10 to 12 watts and a liquid metal thermal compound like uh, Thermal Grizzly Conductor Nort is right up there at around 73 watts per meter Kelvin so 73 watts per meter Kelvin versus 63 it is right up there on the scale in terms of thermal conductivity so something like this really interests me personally because whenever I need to throw a CPU on a test bench or get a new system together on the open bench table you know, I need to use thermal paste. And in some instances, I've gone through one tube per day. I know that sounds like a lot, but I am being serious. I go through a ton of thermal paste. So something like this could save me a bit of money, but it's more so the convenience of just being able to slap on a carbon thermal pad instead of having to clean off the CPU, throw the wipe, alcohol wipe into the bin, and then clean the heat sink swap it over and then reapply thermal paste. It's just, it would be so much better just to apply a carbon pad and just forget about it. Thermal paste, like I said, I can go through quite a lot of, and there actually have been instances where I have completely run out of thermal paste. I'll have the CPU in there, I'll be this close to finishing a video project, and I reach for the thermal paste and it's empty. And that means I have to postpone the project to the next day because I literally have no thermal paste at all. So this is also a great backup option. If you don't want to always rely on thermal paste, you know, you could keep this in your drawer and just have it there as a backup. Now I've mentioned that Carbonaut can be reused an infinite amount of times, but Really, I don't see that happening if you're going to be installing it really more than four or five times. If you install it once, potentially, you know, that's great. Leave it in your system and it won't degrade over time, but you have to be really careful when handling Carbonaut, um, especially when installing and removing it. The reason for that is that it's extremely easy to tear. And let me show you guys, hopefully you can see this on camera. I've got about three tears, one on either side of where the heat spreader was and one right down the middle or a small one down the middle it hasn't actually fully formed yet. But either way, uh, it can tear very, very easily. One of the reasons that it tears very easily is that it's not the exact same outline as the heat spreader on your CPU. And so it will actually overlap along the sides. What ends up happening then is when your heatsink goes onto the CPU, the Carbonaut 
like I said, overlaps over to the side and it gets sort of pressed down and cut off around the edges. So yeah, just be careful because it is a very delicate product. Um, a lot more delicate than I gave it credit. The other thing is that if there's any like residue, thermal paste residue on the bottom of the CPU heatsink or the top of the heat spreader, and that gets onto the carbonate pad, uh, it's not coming off. Don't try to wipe it off with alcohol wipes or anything like that because again, you could potentially tear it. So just make sure that the CPU and CPU cooler are uh, immaculate and you'll have no problems there. You also do get this little box here which you can actually store it in. So that'll keep it nice and safe. Just put tape on there so it doesn't fall out. All right, let's look at the thermal results. And basically, Carbonaut performs kind of like a low-end thermal paste. So here for testing, we're using an 8700K at 5 gigahertz and 1.35 volts. That's running in Blender for 20 minutes. The point of using a heavily overclocked i7 for this test with no power limits is that we can hopefully squeeze as much power and heat out of that CPU as we can. And that way we can potentially see a bigger difference between these compounds, seeing as heat transfer will now be the limiting factor. Also, the cooler that I'm using here is the Noctua U12A and I've locked the fan speed to 1750 RPM. So although in these graphs, carbon might not look like the most appealing option. Again, we're using an overclocked i7 and we're squeezing so much power out of that thing. If you're using this with an i5 or an i3 or just a Ryzen 5 system, for example, you're not going to see much of a difference at all between these thermal compounds. So really for a $15 thermal pan that has an infinite lifespan potentially and it doesn't degrade over time, Carbonaut is actually looking pretty good. So the reason a cheap thermal paste like uh, Deepcool Z5, for example, can beat Carbonaut despite having a much lower thermal conductivity is because uh, it's not actually doing that much. It's just filling in the little tiny little gaps and the inconsistencies in the heat spreader because as we said, it's not perfectly flat. But for the most part, the CPU heat spreader and the CPU cooler cold plate are actually touching or as close as they can be. Whereas, like I said, Carbonaut does prevent that from happening. Now, like I said, for your regular gaming PC builds that you can potentially repaste once a year or two, Thermal pastes are absolutely no problem at all. It's kind of those uh, niche jobs that will really benefit from Carbonaut in my opinion. For example, people like myself, uh, hardware testers, for example, this is really, really useful because thermal paste is just, it's messy, it's annoying, and you always run out of it and you always have to buy more. Carbonaut really saves the day as a nice, convenient backup option. Also, like I said, when we were talking about the results, for those systems that don't really need a lot of thermal conductivity, I'm talking gaming PCs or, you know, i5s, Ryzen 5s, those systems don't really have a lot of heat transfer for the CPU, especially if you're just going to be gaming on them. So for high performance PC builds where I actually care about CPU thermals and I don't mind repasting, I'll be sticking to high performance paste like Cryonaut. But for the open test bench, I really can't wait just to use this instead of thermal paste. I really do think this is an impressive product. Despite not having you know, insane thermal results, it does have a lot of benefits. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.